Merry Christmas. Isn't that great? Once a year we have that season, that window, when we can say Merry Christmas, and it feels so good. It came to my attention that today is also the shortest day of the entire year. In a sense, I guess we could say it is the darkest day of the year. So, good news. I can guarantee it'll be brighter tomorrow. <laughs> Our theme today is peace. Isn't it good to know that we can have peace in a time of darkness? If you have a prayer request that you would like to share and have us pray for publicly, I'm going to just tell you right now that you can Facebook that to our Delisle Community Chapel Facebook page, and we'll pray for you later in the service. Or you can text it to 306-850-7216. This morning, I want to read with you Psalm 29. Psalm 29. It goes like this. Ascribe to the Lord... You heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forests bare. And in his temple all cry, Holy. Glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Listen again to that final verse. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. We pray. Our Father God, on this last Sunday morning prior to the celebration of Christmas, we recognize your presence with us. Thank you that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. As we reflect on what that means, we experience peace with you through our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask God that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, would keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. May everything that happens in this service today be to the honor and to the glory of God. Thank you, God, that your voice is powerful and majestic. Help us to hear. For Jesus said, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. That's what we want to do today. We want to hear from you through your word and by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's join together in worship this morning.
Trumpet sounds, the bride is getting.
privilege to read with you this morning the Christmas story as told by Luke in the second chapter of his gospel. Luke chapter 2. Now very often when this story is read, we stop with verse 20 after the shepherd's visit, but today we're going to continue to read through to verse 40 because I want to draw your attention to some events that happened immediately after the birth of our Lord. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it 
were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul, too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after their marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Within the past few days, we've begun to hear Christmas greetings broadcast on the radio. As I was driving the other day, I heard a business greeting come over the radio speaker. And this is what they said. I found it quite funny. I'll tell you, I found this to be a very funny greeting. Because this is what it said. Merry Christmas! And we hope to serve you in the coming year. Now, you may not think that's funny. But I thought it was funny. Because this greeting was sent by a funeral home. Merry Christmas, and we hope to serve you in the coming year. It kind of reminds me of, uh, of the kids who wanted to get mom a, a real nice Christmas wreath. And so they picked one that said, rest in peace. Because they wanted her to have a peaceful Christmas day. Well, today is the fourth 
Sunday of Advent. And our theme today is peace. In Luke chapter 2, the Christmas story, most of us are familiar with at least the basics of the account. How that uh, Joseph and Mary had to make the trek from Nazareth to Bethlehem, a distance of about 125 kilometers or 80 miles. Mary, of course, was in the last stages of pregnancy. It would not have been an easy journey. And when they got to Bethlehem, where they had to go to pay a big tax bill, they found that the inn was completely full, and so Jesus was born in the stable and laid in the manger. Shepherds outside of Bethlehem were startled when angels arrived. One angel, first of all, who had an announcement for them, and that was amazing enough. The angel that showed up said that, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And then other angels appeared with the first, and they sang together, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. You remember how the shepherds rushed to Bethlehem, saw that it was just as the angels had told them, Mary, Joseph, and the baby wrapped in cloths lying in a manger. And usually, we don't continue the story after that too much. But I think what happens next is very, very significant as well. Today, we reflect on the message of the angel. An early translation put it this way. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace goodwill toward man. But a more recent translation says it this way. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. See, when I read this, I wonder why it is that we do not have universal peace. Why not everyone is experiencing the peace that the angel talked about. The fact is that the peace that God offers is made available to all, but not everyone is experiencing the peace that God offers to us all. Many people are living in fear, panicked by the pandemic, scared to death of death. The Bible says that in the last days, men's hearts will be failing them for fear. Luke chapter 2 continues beyond the night of Jesus' birth. In Luke chapter 2, verse 21, eight days later, we find the baby boy was circumcised and given the name by which we know him, Jesus. Well, actually, Mary and Joseph would have called him Yeshua, but Jesus is the English transliteration of that name. Jesus, does it surprise you when I tell you that Jesus was not a Christian? Jesus was a Jew. There were no Christians yet. What is a Christian after all? A Christian is a person who has repented of their sin, trusted Jesus as their Savior, and follows him as Lord. Jesus never had to repent because Jesus never sinned. And of course, he couldn't be a follower of Jesus. He was Jesus. Verse 22 tells us that 40 days after his birth, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord God at the temple. This act of consecration and 
dedication was required by God's law given through Moses. Now, a lot of people have the idea that in the Old Testament, people were saved by following the law. And then after the time of Jesus, they were saved by believing in Jesus. But the fact is that people have always been saved in the same way, by faith in God. It was because they believed that they obeyed the law, at least for those who had the right attitude toward it. In the temple, Mary and Joseph were met by two people, Simeon and Anna. And it is to the old man, Simeon, that we now turn our attention. Simeon was an elderly man who was known to be righteous and devout in his faith. He was waiting for Israel's Savior to be born. The Holy Spirit led Simeon to the temple the day Mary and Joseph arrived. He had been promised by the Holy Spirit that he would see the Savior before he died. Seeing the child, he took Jesus in his arms and declared, O oh Lord, now let thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. Mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentile, and the glory of thy people Israel. Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. Yea, a sword will pierce to thy own soul, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Mary and Joseph were awed by his words, as they affirmed what had been told to them by God about their son. Simeon had been waiting his whole life for God to act in the world. He was seeking tangible hope. And now, God was acting in an unspeakable way. Simeon would not live to witness the impact of Jesus' ministry, but he had the unshakable confidence that God was with Israel. This past year, we have been waiting for tangible hope in the midst of a global pandemic. We can be assured that God is with us, still, and that He is working for our good. Jesus is the light that reveals God's goodness and love to the world. In every circumstance, in every situation, in every yesterday, today, and tomorrow, God is with you at this very moment. May you sense the presence of Christ in your waiting, in your seeking, in your trusting, and in your faithfulness this Christmas season. The Bible says that Simeon was righteous and devout. To be righteous means to be committed to doing what is right, to doing the right thing in God's eyes. That word devout, I thought I kind of knew what it meant, but I wasn't sure that I fully understood what that word meant. 
So I looked it up and got a dictionary definition, and it surprised me a little bit. To be devout, it said, a devout person is a person who commits their time and resources to one main thing. Simeon's whole life revolved around waiting for the Messiah to come. Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel, a term used for the Messiah who was to be born. Simeon's devotion and trust in the Lord resulted in the peace that he experienced as a result and is a model for us. The Holy Spirit had promised Simeon that he would see the Messiah in person before his death. We have no idea how long Simeon had been waiting to see Jesus. He had no doubt seen many babies come and go from the temple. How did he know that this was the child that he was waiting for? You know, the baby Jesus didn't have a visible halo over his head like you see in some of the religious art. It was the Holy Spirit who revealed to Simeon that Jesus was the Messiah. God kept his promise and arranged for Simeon to see Messiah Jesus before Simeon passed from this earth. We know that God always keeps his promises. And yet, aren't we Surprised when he does? Simeon's first response was praise. It says, he praised God. And this is what he said, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. Simeon may not have lived long after this, but he had peace as he faced his approaching death. The peace of God which comes from knowing Jesus has made the lives of millions of believers in this world peaceful and has removed the fear of death. I do not fear death. Although I will tell you, I certainly do not look forward to the possibility of pain and sickness which often precedes physical death. If I have a choice, or if I had a choice, I would prefer my death to be quick and painless. But I, I understand that God often allows his people to go through suffering and pain, and the way that they bear that by the help of his spirit brings great glory to him. Unbelievers can never have true peace about death. Many are terrified of it. Some may find temporary comfort from another source. But there is no other way to peace beyond the grave than through faith in Jesus Christ, God's one and only Son, who was born on that first Christmas, who died and shed his blood on that cross, and then who came back to life again. Jesus is alive today, and he's giving peace to those who commit their lives to him. The Bible says the punishment that brought us peace was laid on him. It is only when you have a relationship with God that is real and personal, that you can experience true peace. It is well said that no person is truly ready to live until they are ready to die. I want to leave you with this thought. No God, no peace. No God, no peace. We pray. Father God, 
May we, like Simeon, look forward to the coming of our Messiah. Thank you that we can have a personal relationship with you now. Through faith in the crucified and resurrected Son of God. I ask God that you would work in our hearts right now. If there are any here who have never before made a personal commitment to you, may this be their day. The day that they find peace with God and experience the peace of God that transcends all understanding. Lord Jesus Christ, in life and in death, you are our only hope. We give ourselves to you completely. Amen. Before we pray, I just uh, want to let you know, if you have not heard the word yet, that uh, since last Sunday, or actually immediately after last Sunday, our friend Wilbert Esau passed away, if you had not uh, been made aware of that yet. And then uh, just this morning, 
we heard uh, from Darrell Zorb that uh, Sister Louise passed away last night from a heart attack. So uh, we want to pray for these families. And are we not so grateful for the peace that comes from knowing Jesus? We pray. Father God, thank you that Jesus came into this world that first Christmas. Thank you that he lived among us and loved us with a divine love. Thank you that he shed his blood on that cross, dying, taking the penalty and the punishment for sins that all of us have committed. Thank you that Jesus came back to life again, that he ascended to the Father, that he is with us now by the Holy Spirit's presence, and that he is coming in person one day soon. Today we thank you for the peace that comes when we have a relationship with you. Thank you for the joy that we have when we know that those who have departed this world were believers and are now in your presence. In fact, God, I want to pray that you would be with every one of our people and each of our families. Strengthen our marriages. Make our homes happy at this Christmas time. Even though we will not be able to gather in the way that we have usually done in years past, we know that the real meaning of Christmas can never be diminished. We want to recognize what really Christmas is all about, the coming into this world of Jesus Christ, our Emmanuel. We pray, God, that uh, this uh, time of the COVID would pass quickly, we ask that the vaccines which are coming on stream would be effective and safe. We look forward to the times when we will be able to gather more freely in larger numbers. May we never give up hope. May we always hold on to love. May we experience joy. And may we have the peace that comes only from the Christ, the Messiah, our Jesus. Today, God, I want to ask that you would bless the journey to Christmas that will be presented here on our church grounds on Christmas Eve. Be with those who have worked to prepare. Bring out those from our community who need to be presented with the good news of the Christmas story. We ask that you would draw many people to yourself through this season. Father, you know the needs of each of our hearts. You know what's going on inside of us right now. And you know if there are those among us who are not fully living in the peace that comes only from you. May that be their reality today. Help us all to rely upon you, Father. You love us. You care for us, you provide for us, you bless us, and today we give you praise. Like Simeon of old, we look to you, Father, and experience peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen.
receive the benediction in the words of Jesus himself who said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Amen.